Welcome to this podcast designed to prepare students to master the 2013 Washington State Biology End of Course Assessment. I hope that whether you're a student, a parent, or an educator, you will get a lot out of tuning in. The main goals for this podcast are to become familiar with the types of questions that will be featured on the EOC, to closely examine a practice scenario and evaluate where and how points can be earned, and lastly, to become aware of some of the common ways to earn points and pitfalls to avoid that might cost students points when answering this type of short answer prompt. Students in the class of 2015 and beyond are required to pass the biology EOC as part of graduation requirements. There are three item types on the EOC. Item type number one is multiple choice, the second is completion, and the last one is short answer. There are a total of seven possible options of the short answer. We will be focusing on the field study as um, one of these seven. There are a few vocabulary terms to be familiar with as we proceed. Uh, First, environmental conditions are temperature, humidity, sunlight, dissolved gases, anything that is um, measurable and has an effect in the environment. Population is defined as the members of the same species. A habitat is a natural home or environment of an animal, plant, or other organism. And an ecosystem is the sum total of all of the organisms that live in an area, plus the uh, non-living conditions like temperature and humidity and such. So in the EOC practice materials that were distributed by the OSPI, the salmonberry plant scenario was given for the field study. The salmonberry plant scenario is provided... Salmonberry plants can be found all along the Pacific Coast. Salmonberry plants are a food source for many animals in the Pacific Coast ecosystems, including hummingbirds, deer, and bear. Scientists conducted a field study to learn about salmonberry plant populations in different habitats in Washington. The field study question posed was, how does the salmonberry plant population vary by habitat, or how does it change by where you are um, sampling in this area? So in this picture, you have a stream running through a forest, and you have these small bushes called salmonberries that are found in various uh, densities or clusters. And you'll see that there is a 5 by 5 meter plot defined by the black uh, square. And the idea here is that if you were to do multiple 5 by 5 meter plot squares, you could measure how many salmonberry plants are found there, and then that's the uh, first steps to answering this question. So the procedure is given and is typical in in a uh, field study scenario. And then the idea here is that you would take the original procedure and then you would tweak it or change it in some way to suit the new question that's given. Here are the data that were collected. You'll see that there are three different habitats, the forest edge, the stream bank, and the forest. You'll notice that uh, there are three different plots that were uh, set up in each of these habitats. And then at the end of this experiment, the three plots were averaged. In addition to that, uh, data collection was um, listed at forest edge, stream bank, and forest habitats. The date and time that these collections were made was recorded, and also the temperature was also recorded. So when you as a a student are given this uh, field study prompt, you'll see something that looks similar to this. You'll notice that the um, procedure must include a certain set um, list of data, Those are bulleted items. The the key thing here is that you don't need to memorize all the things that are being discussed in this podcast. You should be able to just recognize what does it mean when it says logical steps or what uh, kinds of conditions would you compare or um, what does it mean by collecting data and and describing the method for doing so. Uh, So going through this podcast, hopefully this will help you to unpack what the requirements are so that when you are doing this yourself, it'll make it a lot easier. So here's the the different question that's posed. Instead of the habitat being changed, as was introduced before, this is how does the total rainfall in different years affect the mass of the berries produced by a salmonberry plant. So the total rainfall would be uh, something like the manipulated variable where it is the cause in this causal relationship, and then the mass would be the responding variable. So you may think that in years where there's more rainfall that the berries would be heavier and maybe um, in years where the rainfall is lighter the mass of the berries would be less. So can you make that connection? And then this is the space where you'd write your procedure. The total number of attributes um, include uh, seven. 
and to score two points you may score uh, six or seven attributes so you can afford to miss one attribute and still score the maximum of two points. So the first attribute is method for collecting data. So did you state or imply some sampling method or strategy that's consistent that you can use from um, each of the different sampling times? For example, keep the sampling area the same, count the number of salmon berries at the same time every day or week or month or year. An example might include keep the sampling area the same, count the number of salmon berries at the same time every day, week, month, year. You can choose the time frame for uh, measuring. Second attribute is the conditions to be compared. Did you identify only one variable that you are testing the effect of during the experiment? And then you would figure out what the different levels or range of conditions would be um, for this particular uh, situation. So in the, in the previous scenario where it was testing the effect of habitat, you notice that they had chosen three different habitats. So those would be the three conditions. So you had a forest edge, stream bank, and forest located here. Those would be the conditions. The data to be collected, so in effect, um, what is the responding variable? So in this case, um, it would be the mass of the berries that were collected. Did you state specifically that you would record measurements? And then did you also state when you would record measurements? Uh, the word periodically in this case just means from time to time. So you would set the interval whether it be once a week or twice a week or you know, twice a month, you can determine that on your own. And then it must also be included in a data table or a chart. Did you mention that you would repeat observations? Typically a common recommendation is for three trials that are averaged at the end. So an example might include go to the same plants every year and then repeat uh, steps four and five for the same plants. The next attribute is record environmental conditions. Did you describe at least one local environmental condition that might affect the manipulated variable? So in addition to the rainfall, did you mention other things that might change from a daily or a weekly basis? For example, air temperature, uh, the date, the time. So for example, if we're talking about date, um, maybe we're talking about um, you know month to month. So the weather conditions in May may be very different than in November. Or if you think about the time of day, whether you do a, a morning sampling or, a, or an afternoon sampling, uh, humidity may be different, temperature may be different, maybe um, the local uh, wind patterns may be different. So in addition to the manipulated variable, choose one other thing that you would keep track of. And the idea is you're trying to lock down any unforeseen or, or unintended changes that may affect uh, the responding variable, or in this case, the mass of the berries. Did you write steps in a logical fashion? So did you use numbers? And if you include a diagram, is it well drawn and is it well labeled? Common mistakes when writing procedures are not stating an end time for recording observations. So if you want to do a year-long study, indicate that you would be measuring the mass of berries for uh, 12 months and you would go once a week or once a month for that 12-month period. Uh, if you say if you say uh, setup is diagrammed, but the diagram is incomplete or confusing, then you would lose points for logical steps. Or if you just say record mass, but you don't say specifically the mass of the salmon berry, then that would be vague data, and you would not uh, you would not earn that point. So let's go through a couple sample answers. We have three student responses, and we'll kind of pick these apart and learn where and how they earn points. So in the first instance. The first criteria is a method for collecting data, and you'll see that the, the um, points were earned for steps three and six. So choosing three salmonberry plants that are within the, uh, the frame, the five by five frame, and then number six, returning to the same location and the same date for the next five years and repeating those steps four and five. So those would be the um, method for collecting data. So you'll see that they earn the point here for uh, attribute one. For the second attribute, conditions to be compared, you'll see that in step five, where it reads, determine the total rainfall for the location between August 1st, 2012 and August 1st, 2013, those points were awarded, as well as in step six for the next five years and repeat steps four and five for the same plants. So in effect, that is your manipulated variable. So you'll see here the uh, conditions to be compared was given one point out of one. The third attribute is uh, the data to be collected, and in step four where it says determine the mass of the berries together. So you'll see the uh, rubric showing uh, one point given for data to be collected. 
The next attribute, number four, is how often measurements should be recorded and the environmental conditions to be recorded. So you'll notice in step four and step five, there uh, is mention of uh, two times to record. You'll see the point given here under record measurements. In the next attribute, number five, um, it mentions that in step three, choose three seven-berry plants that are within the frame. And in step six, return to the same location and the same plants. So by saying that, you will be earning the points for observations are repeated. For the sixth attribute, environmental conditions being recorded, in step one, it mentions record the location, date, time, and air temperature. So a point was awarded for recording environmental conditions. And then the last attribute is indicated here as logical steps. You'll see that the steps are detailed enough to be repeated. You'll see that they are numbered. And you'll see that plenty of detail has been given so that if this procedure were given to a different scientist or experimenter, they would reasonably be able to repeat the experiment and then hopefully come up with uh, similar data. And so your points are given under logical steps. So a total of seven attributes are, are awarded. Two score points are uh, also uh, tallied. And so this is a really, really good answer. If we look at a one-point response, you'll see that there are some elements that were found in the two-point response and then some that were lacking. Overall, we would say that uh, four points out of seven were, were scored for attributes, and so that falls within the one score point range. You'll see in steps four, five, and six, conditions to be compared, data to be collected, data to be recorded, and then uh, observations that are repeated, but they didn't score points for the other three. You'll see in the zero point response, there's a very minimal amount of information given, much uh, less so than the previous two examples. And if you look at the uh, rubric, there are zero points that were awarded. So as we wrap up, a couple takeaways to be uh, aware of. One is don't confuse a prediction or a conclusion for procedural steps. Predictions happen at the beginning of the experiment. Conclusions happen at the end of the experiment with procedural steps being kind of toward the uh, front half of the experiment. A control experiment is not a field study. So as I mentioned earlier in the lab, you have greater control over potential sources of error. But in a field study, lots of things are going on at the same time. We don't have uh, total control over wind and rain or snow or, or humidity. And so by making sure that you keep track of other conditions in addition to the manipulated variable, you're going to try to get a, a lock on those other potential sources of error so that you can make a good connection between the cause and effect, the manipulated variable and the responding variable. So don't use the same uh, responding variable that was described in the original scenario, so mix it up and, and do something different. Uh, you will earn no points if you don't correctly match the new manipulated variable with some appropriate responding variable. So you will typically be given some new manipulated variable to test, and so you have to come up with something that's reasonable based on that. Uh, describe how the two connect together, the cause and effect, when you're writing your procedure. You don't need to specifically state that the manipulated variable equals this thing or responding variable equals that thing, but if you use them appropriately in your procedure, then the uh, ELC graders should give you those those points. And then be very clear about what you're measuring. So in, in the the second scenario where it asked to test the effect of rainfall on the mass of the berries, uh, make sure that you're saying it's the mass of the berries or not just the mass or some other vague aspect of the berries. So record the data, measure the data, watch what happens, and record measurements. Those are all kind of unclear. So here's a list of things that would receive credit. So record the number of organisms in the sample area or measure the time for the seeds to germinate. And then when you're choosing a manipulated variable, choose three different conditions or levels that you would test it at. So in the, in the first scenario, uh, when you're looking at habitat, uh, they chose three different habitats to test it. And so that's a, uh, a good tip for you to earn that point. So here's some resources that I used in uh, preparing this podcast. You're welcome to look at those on your own. And as I wrap up, I'd like to thank you very much for joining in. In this podcast, you saw that the short answer new field study item has seven attributes, and you have to score six of them at least to score the maximum two points.
you saw three student sample responses, each of which which scored different scores from zero on the low end to two on the high end. And these scores were based on how well the answer matched the rubric. And then lastly, you learned how to avoid some simple mistakes that might cost you points. Please direct any comments or questions to me at the email address provided on the screen. Good luck, and I hope this helped.